One of the biggest stressors of divorce is co-parenting. So during this time of school closings, working from home and anxiety, it is essential for parents to be working together to help children know there is a united front looking out for them. So joining us on the phone this morning to talk more about that is Lauren Statz, a family law expert. Good morning, Lawrence. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So how does this work, especially legally? You don't want to make sure you're uh, not adhering to the visitation rights. How do you work with this during a co-parenting pandemic? Well, in general, it's like any other you know, crises of sorts, and that is, is that uh, parents really need to try to work together. Unfortunately, a lot of parents uh, who are divorced have great difficulties working together, and that leads to conflicts. What, what do you recommend to parents to try to avoid those conflicts as much as possible? Well, the, the primary thing most judges would tell people is to be reasonable. Um, the difficulty, of course, is is that a lot of these, uh, a lot of divorced couples or separated parents, um, one parent thinks the other parent's being unreasonable, and that parent thinks the first parent's unreasonable. Um, but there are a number of things they can do. What are some of the things that you recommend they can do? Well, um, one of the, the main things that uh, was recently put out by the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers and uh, the Association of Family and Conciliation Courts, which are um, organizations dedicated to reducing conflict uh, in uh, family situations. Uh, one, they recommend that you be healthy. Um, it's important to follow the CDC guidelines as a real practical matter. Um, if, you know, if a parent is sick, they have a hard time parenting. If the child is sick, it adds stress to the family. Um, next, they say be mindful uh, it, that you ought to talk to your child about the serious of the pan seriousness of the pandemic, but at the same time, be realistic and calming. Uh, you don't want to get them you know, too excited. The, one of the big things is to be compliant with court orders. And that can sometimes be difficult or impossible, depending on um, uh, you know, what local rules are in place or national, you know, state rules are in place about working and transportation and things like that. Um, to a large extent, we're in uncharted territory on that, and therefore people have to you know, try and be reasonable, use good judgment. Um, next, they say be creative. Sometimes you may have to do some things that you never contemplated. Um, maybe time sharing through video or something like that. Um, and be transparent. And that is that parents really should be open and honest with each other about the child's situation and what's going to work or what not won't work. Um, next, be generous. And last, be understanding. Both of those things, to me, go hand in hand. Those are things where... Um, the, the you know if the parent can't exercise time sharing, then maybe one parent ought to voluntarily uh, create some extra time for the parent who missed out. I think a lot of parents at home are probably, if you're in this situation where you are divorced and you have co-custody, do you believe that the courts are going to be flexible if, say, you are supposed to have two days out of the week with the child, but it's not possible? Um, I think judges in general um, are more practical about these things. Uh, they're going to look for um, who's trying to help, uh, who's insisting on their rights at the expense of the child. Um, so in general, I think the courts are not going to hold people to the actual letter of orders, but at the same time, they're going to expect them to try. Lauren Statz, thank you so much. And as we know, the main priority here is what's best for the child.